What's up guys? Jeremy here checking in with your man. Almost didn't recognize me, did you? I done got cleaned up and everything. But anyway, we about to come at y'all with another segment of cooking with the crew, shouting. So I'm gonna get inside the house so we can get this thing going, y'all. Stay tuned. So as y'all know, I always come at y'all with the heat, man. So today we cooking a meal that can be prepared for lunch or dinner, man. So look, I ain't gonna talk no more. I'ma just get to it. Stay tuned, man. All right, y'all, so for the meal today, we got the fresh tilapia on deck. We got the fresh green beans. We got one potato. Then we got the lemon pepper. We got the minced garlic. We got the garlic and herb seasoning. And we got the salt, baby. That's who we got right there. So right now, we just chopping up the potato, getting it prepared, getting it nice and ready. So all I'm going to do is just chop it into some nice slices, you know, kind of with the medium thickness. Just, you know, we don't want to have the potatoes too small in the skillet. We want to have some bite to them. So we're just going to chop it up into some nice little slices, then turn the slices over and chop Chop them up again, man. So now we're gonna get to the prep of the fresh green beans. I got them lined nicely up in a little roll on my cutting board, you know, so to make it easier to cut. So the green beans, of course, are naturally a little bit long, so I just cut them in half. All right, now last but most certainly not least, we gotta prepare the most important part of my dish, the fresh tilapia. So we just gonna start off with a little salt to taste. Then right after that, we gonna drop the lemon pepper on there, man. And then we gotta rub that in, make sure that seasoning stick. You gotta, yeah, prepare it with love and care. Then last but not least, you gotta put the garlic and herb seasoning on there. Gotta have it, you know what I mean? And then yes, right after I'm done doing it to this side, I am gonna flip and then I'm gonna season the other side too. Oh yeah, we getting ready. We just dropping them in the skillet right now in a nice little mix of my go-to olive oil and butter, baby. All right, so now while the potatoes are cooking on up in the skillet, we gotta add that seasoning to it. So first we gotta drop a nice little generous portion of lemon pepper. That's the go-to, man. Then right after that, we gonna add the garlic and herb seasoning. You know what I'm saying? They gotta get on there, get to circulating. Then last but not least, we gotta add a little salt to taste. You know, I can't have my potatoes bland. You know, they gotta have a little salt kick to them. You know what I'm saying? Not too much, but just enough. Oh, hoo, hoo. you see the color on them potatoes while they sizzling in that skillet, man. I like that little golden brown on them when they get there you know it's real. Yeah, man, now we just dropping them green beans in the skillet in the go-to once again, a little olive oil and a little butter. First, we gonna toss a little minced garlic over there. Yeah, you see that flick of the wrist. Then right after that, we gotta put the garlic and herb seasoning. Then right after that, we gotta put the lemon pepper back on there, give them that nice little zest. Then last but not least, gotta have a little salt to taste, you know what I mean? So we don't want them too salty, but just enough like I said before. And then, bow, that's all it is to it, y'all. Yeah, man, y'all see them green beans sizzling in that skillet, man. What I always say, sizzle, sizzle, shout it. Y'all see that good color, man, that garlic and that olive oil, everything cooking down. Oh, man, that looks so good. All right, now, all right, now, look at me dropping this fish on in the skillet in the go-to. You guessed it once again, the olive oil and the butter. Gotta have it. Come on now, talk to me. Y'all see that nice golden brown on there? That tells you this fish is ready, man. Oh, it looks so good, don't it? Oh, and it smells so good, so I wish I could smell it, honestly. Yes, sir. This is that finished product, y'all. Oh, wait, it looks so scrum dilly umptious, man. We got the fresh sauteed green beans. Then we got the fresh sauteed potatoes. Then, oh my goodness, we got that fresh pan seared tilapia, man. All right, y'all. So as you can see, that finished product looks scrumptious, don't it? But look, your boy is hunger, man. I ain't cooked this food just for it to sit here and look pretty. So I gotta get off here and eat, but I'm gonna pass it on to the next crew member so they can show y'all what they done whipped up good for y'all. So until next time, peace. Hey guys, and welcome back to another segment of Cooking with the Crew. Surprise, I'm making coffee. Today we're gonna be making cold brew, which is my favorite way to have my coffee. I'm a big cold coffee fan, and one of the best things I've ever purchased is this cold brew maker. I love it to pieces. Life before it was bleak, but here we are. So it has this little filter that goes inside and you just put, it recommends like 10 to 12 scoops, but I think that's kind of a lot. So I do like eight to 10 scoops, somewhere in there. So I'll probably do like eight-ish scoops and I just take my coffee um, and by scoops, I mean tablespoons. Let's 
seven, and eight should do the trick. All right, now here comes the complicated part is you really just screw this in here and it secures and this is the lid. So I've filled this um, with water, not completely full because you need a little wiggle room. And then you just screw in the lid. Boom. And you put it in the fridge and it will cold brew for like eight-ish hours. I usually just do it overnight. And boom, I have a fresh batch of cold brew in the morning and it's so good. Now you don't need a cold brew maker to make cold brew. Before I had this, I would just take a mason jar and put a few scoops of my coffee grounds in the mason jar, put it in the fridge, and then in the morning, I would filter out the grounds as I pour it into a new cup, so that's totally an option. But this is just so much easier, and it's not that big. It fits very easily into the fridge. Um, and it, you just, to pour it, you just turn the little lid and pour it like a pitcher, and it's so nice, and I love it a lot. And I have my cold brew every morning and probably afternoon. And eight-ish hours later, this is what our cold brew looks like. Um, it's really good coffee. It's pretty strong, but I like my coffee that way. I just do maybe like a little bit of oat milk or almond milk, some cream and some cinnamon, and sometimes I drink it black. It depends on how crazy I'm feeling. Um, but thanks for making cold brew with me today. Turned out great, you guys. What's up, everybody? It's El Cipote Ron, as we like to say in El Salvador, the Kid Ron. Um, obviously, representing real heavy right now. Because <laughs> today I'm making something very special, very near and dear to my heart, something from the roots, pupusas. My mom would make this every, like, every, it felt like every day as kids. Uh, there's a chicharron, which is pork, cheese, um, frijoles, which is beans, or revueltas, all three together. And like, we would have it every, it felt like every week. Uh, it's a very simple recipe, but almost impossible to make. Like, you gotta be blessed by like Salvadorian witch doctors, by Pipil, our native people. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drink some witch potion, which is cola champagne. It is a traditional soda from Temple America, from El Salvador. Mm. Don't ask me to translate what it means. I don't know what cola champagne means. Champagne cola? I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. Let's get to making some food, yeah. All right guys, so typically you want to use a bowl, but I didn't have one, so I just use this baking sheet or baking pan, whatever you want to call it. And then what you want to do is get yourself dirty, mix it all in there. I didn't get enough water this time around, so let me try again. Here I go. That eh, looks about right. Just mixing the masa, just trying to make it kind of like Play-Doh. Kind of make it like dough, yeah. Real simple, real easy. On to the next step. All right guys, so now you're gonna put some water in that mozzarella cheese. You wanna have it somewhere in the middle of the consistency of like that masa in the background. Uh, you want the cheese to be formed. You want it to have some consistency so you can put into the masa and you'll see how we do it. All right guys, you got the masas ready or the dough if you wanna call it. The masa on the right is for the tortillas and the masa on the left is the cheese that we're gonna put into the pupusas. All right guys, so you don't wanna put a lot of oil in the pan. You just kinda of wanna put like it's a thin layer of oil on there. As you can see, I'm using a napkin just to line the pan a little more. Here I go. And here, just gonna show you a rough shape of how we make the masa or the dough. Bam, simple, easy. All right guys, very simple ingredients, but extremely difficult this part. So I'm gonna make a little crater in the middle of the masa, take some of the cheese, put it in the middle, and I'm gonna try to enclose it with more masa or more dough. As you can see, I'm trying to, trying to get it all together. Now I'm trying to flatten it out. This part is by far the hardest thing I've ever had to do cooking wise. This takes like finesse and finagling. As you can see, I'm trying to make it perfectly round, trying to make it flat, trying to make it thin. Oh boy, look at that. And, uh, that's not so bad. Yeah, well, well, let's take it over to the pan and see what happens. Oh, there we go. Breaking the masa. That's all right, just put it in there. It looks good, looks good, Ron. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. All right guys, so I'm at the halfway point right now with the pupusas. Um, I have a lot of masa and some cheese left over over here, but um, obviously we're not gonna show you everything. As you can see, los pupusetas se cocinan pero re bien. Velos. They're cooking real nice. <laughs> anyway, 
Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get these two done, and then hopefully the cheese will like just just. So guys, this is my first time ever making pupusa, so please be kind to the way they look. They're a little deformed, but again, first time making it. Bring it in. It's oblong. That's fine. That's fine. Let's see what it looks like on the end. It, the only thing that matters is what's on the inside. On the inside is cheese. Lo bello. Mama I did it. Oh, it's hot. It's hot, mama. Oh wow. It's very hot. Oh, that's quite wow. So obviously I need to work on this recipe a little more. Sorry guys. I need to work on this recipe a little more. Be able to make it perfectly round, be able to cook it a little better, add some more cheese to it. But um, yeah, that is a pupusa from a very novice person. But we'll see how it turns out. I got just just oodles and oodles of masa here. Just oodles of masa left. So I'm gonna keep working on it. 